Josh Smith with GottaBeMobile.com. Today I'm going to tell you about the iOS 8 release date and some iOS 8 features that you can expect on your iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch later this year. Apple has not yet announced an iOS 8 release date, but it looks pretty good that we're going to see the iOS 8 release date arrive on Wednesday, September 17th. That's probably going to happen around 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. This is based on Apple's previous history. Typically, they release an iPhone about a week and a half later after they do the announcement. In that case, we're looking at iPhone 6 release date on September 19th, and two days before that, we typically see a new version of iOS. So look for the iOS 8 release date then, based on two credible sources saying Apple will hold an iPhone 6 event on September 9th. In iOS 8, the home screen looks a lot like iOS 7. We don't see a lot of visual changes there. Same goes for the lock screen. On the lock screen, basic camera access, still have access to control center notification. But one change, if you swipe over, you'll see under emergency, you can now, instead of just making an emergency call, you can hit medical ID, and that's gonna take you to an ID card that's linked to the help app. Will allow you to see someone's, in case of emergency contacts, and things like that, first responders, and other people will really appreciate this feature. Now, if we go ahead and go in to the home screen, one other thing to pay attention to is there's a slightly new look for the control center. This is mainly in the shading and just really small tweaks. You're not gonna notice a huge difference, but there's some, some differences there. The notification center, we no longer have this split notifications area. Now, it's kind of annoying because you still have to do this stupid tap tap to get rid of notifications. You can't swipe the notifications away. The today screen allows you to see what we've seen before. Driving, weather, calendar, stocks, etc and we can go down and edit, and we're gonna be able to add widgets that other apps include with their purchase or with their free apps into the notification center. The new Messages app for iOS 8 is packed with really cool features. First off, I can tap this microphone, and it's gonna record what I say. You can see it recording it there. It's faster and more accurate than using dictation. I can swipe up and send that, or I can play it back. In this case, I'm gonna cancel that. As for sending photos, there's a new interface. If I tap that once, I can access my photo library, but I can also swipe through recent photos. And if I want to send multiple photos, I can tap on them and send them here a lot nicer than before. Now, if I tap and hold the camera icon, it's going to go to this screen and I can go over here and I can start recording and it'll record a message. I can play it and I can send it. And Messages is going to be smart enough to remove these over time so you don't end up using all of your iPhone storage on this. If you're in a group message, you can now do two very nice things. You can turn on Do Not Disturb. With this on, I'll still get the rest of my messages, phone calls, etc., but I won't hear anything from these chatty people that just interrupt my day. I can also share my location or send my current location, and if you go into the information, you can see the info for each contact, and you can also leave group iMessages as well. Now, the iPhone camera app doesn't change a whole lot from time to time, but there is a cool new feature called Time Lapse, which will automatically take snapshots over time and create a cool time lapse video that you can share, and it'll show movement in a really cool way. You can check out some examples of that over on gottobemobile.com. Another feature that I really enjoy is the ability to send photos and items by AirDrop, and I can send them to my MacBook instead of just to other iOS devices. So I can quickly grab this photo, tap on that, it's gonna wait, it's gonna find it and send it, and boom, it appears in my downloads folder. I don't have to plug anything in, I don't have to email or use Dropbox, etc. Another cool thing that Apple is doing in the photo area is iCloud Photo Library. So you can't really see it here, but you know, all those photos that you keep you run out of storage on your iPhone. With iCloud Photo, you can buy storage at a better price and you can keep all of your photos on your iPhone, but really they're on the internet. You're gonna be able to access them as if they were on your phone. You can pull them down as long as you have an internet connection and they're gonna be full resolution photos, full resolution videos. I believe the pricing starts at about 99 cents for 20 gigabytes uh, for a year. That may change, so keep that in mind. The multitasking screen where you can access your apps now shows recent contacts and you can tap on that contact and you can call their specific devices, mobile work, send them a message, make a FaceTime call, etc. And that's all on that quick access from a double tap so you can quickly reach the people that you want to talk to. 
The keyboard now has predictive text. You can turn that on or off. Right now you hold down on this emoji icon and then you're able to turn predictive text on or off and you'll see that spaces up here. And it knows who you're talking to when you're using it in iMessage or mail. So you'll get responses that are tailored to the person you wanna to talk to. So it'll be informal with your friends, more formal with your boss. It'll learn how you respond to your wife, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll be able to tap there and it's gonna start filling things in based on what it thinks you want to say. You can also install third-party keyboards uh, from Swipe or SwiftKey or places like that. We'll see some of those available on the App Store when iOS 8 arrives later this year. Another really handy feature that I've personally wanted on the iPhone for a long time is detailed battery usage. So I can see what apps are using my battery the most in the last 24 hours and even for the last seven days. So I'm able to find out what's using up all my battery life, why I'm getting bad battery life, etc. I can find that app and then I'm able to uninstall it or do whatever I need to. Maybe, maybe I just avoid playing Clash of Clans when I need longer battery life. This is available on the iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch in iOS 8, and it's really, really handy. There's no real great way to show this off on video, but there is new family share. So if I buy an app, I can share that with people in my family. We link our accounts with the same credit card, and I'm able to share purchases with them so that we don't have to buy apps over and over. And if we buy a movie, it's available on all our devices, it's available on kids' devices if you have kids. And parents will get notifications when a kid wants to buy an app or make an in-app purchase, and they can accept or decline just by tapping right on their iPhone screen, even if they're nowhere near the child when they're using their device. Some of my other favorite features require the new version of OS X on a Mac. It's called OS X Yosemite, and with that, the iPhone and your Mac can communicate more. There's also some of these that will work with your iPhone and your iPad. So basically, if you get a phone call or a text message, not an iMessage, not a FaceTime call, just regular old, everyone calling you home phone or Android phone, you can pick it up on your iPad running iOS 8, and it will use it as basically a speakerphone. And you can do the same thing on your Mac, and text messages will show up in the Messages app on your iPad and in the Messages app on your Mac. And there's another cool feature called Handoff. So basically, if I'm writing an email on my iPhone and I come over to my computer and I set my phone down, it's gonna know that and it'll open up mail on my computer and I can work on that. And if I don't finish it, when I shut my computer, close my computer and walk away with my iPhone, I can pull that back up right from the lock screen so I'm able to keep working on the same thing without emailing documents back and forth or sharing, etc., etc. These are just a few of the really interesting new features that are available in iOS 8. We also expect to see some cool things like iCloud Drive that'll make file sharing across a variety of file types a lot easier. So stay tuned and check out Gotta Be Mobile closer to the iOS 8 release date to see more on that. The iOS 8 Health app is still kind of a little bit of work in progress during the beta, but you can get an idea of what it's tracking. It's using the built-in things in sensors in the iPhone 5S to track my steps and my distance. I can manually enter caffeine information, and there's gonna be a lot of other health data that we can pull in, nutrition, fitness, body measurements, sleep, vitals, etc., etc. This will tie into sources such as apps and so if you have an app that hooks into a health uh, accessory that you plug in or sync by bluetooth it should be able to connect through here and pull that over into your health data and then show it on your dashboard so you have a one-stop shop for all of your health information this may also play a role in the rumored iWatch that could come out later this year and do some more sensors and stuff like that head over to gotta be to check out more about ios 8 and the iphone 6.